Oh my, where do we begin? If you're using a computer with hardware manufactured any time during the last two decades or so, then this video probably pertains to you in at least some sense. Now, I wanna start off by saying that my job here is not to instill fear. While your kernel memory may be at risk to thousands of hackers, vendors Intel, ARM, AMD, and others are ready to roll out patches for these uh, issues. But some of these come at cost. In this Minute Science episode, we'll discuss those costs and why, on an architectural level, we even have to pay in the first place. Google anything with the words security or bug in it and you'll likely be inundated with reporting sites, some that have absolutely nothing to do with technology, attempting to describe the security threat to modern processors. Let's start with the basics first. The first thing you need to know is that every modern CPU needs a modern operating system. Windows, Linux, Mac OS, doesn't really matter, but it needs something by which to communicate with and manage onboard hardware. All of these operating systems rely on something called virtual memory. It's a way for systems to preserve RAM in favor of other storage drives, let's say hard disk drives in this case. This is often referred to as paid filing when your computer dumps temporary data into literal files on your storage drives in place of system RAM. Now in turn, virtual address space requires a sort of mapping process. In comes the page table. Think of it like a translator. Every program in your operating system has a unique virtual address corresponding to a physical address. When your CPU calls a physical address, it uses the page table, or more specifically, the translation look aside buffer, that's basically dedicated CPU cache, to locate and draw the file. Now, without getting into rings and kernel specifics, what you need to know is that a certain degree of speculation ensues when a CPU executes a task and stores it to memory. For example, it may anticipate a certain mathematical function tied to a physical address based on environmental cues and store the answer before the problem is even drawn. This in turn speeds up processes and only requires a simple deletion if the prediction leads to no real address. But the drawback now exposed to the public involves this speculative execution. When the CPU seeks to predict, it temporarily stores metadata in the TLB and cache, which is relatively unprotected and vulnerable. In fact, it's been exploited by various research groups and brought to the attention of namely Intel, whose architecture specifically prioritizes speculative execution. The reason AMD claims to be free of these chains resides in the fact that their CPUs do not engage in page table speculation. Therefore, no sensitive data is stored in cache while it searches for addresses. Anything from password fragments to full program and application control could be seized from this information, and that's why it's so important here. Simply put, programs aren't supposed to have this kind of access to other programs, and thus users aren't supposed to have this kind of access to those programs. But where do the expected performance hits come into play then? Well, since this is an issue with the protocols of the architecture, a simple microcode push won't remedy anything. Instead, the bug requires direct manipulation of the software because this is like something baked into the CPU. For example, Linux systems are now pushing an acronym dubbed Kaiser, which essentially splits kernel and user spaces to eliminate leakage. Intel plans to do the same thing in the coming days, but it comes at a price. Now, regarding performance degradation and reports of 30% slower Intel computers, these are extremely workload sensitive and likely won't affect the average user. A few users testing the latest Coffee Lake CPUs, for example, have reported substantial cuts in some very heavy CPU synthetic benchmarks, but virtually no losses regarding gaming and content creation, which is what I personally care about. Not sure how it's possible, and I remain neutral in this matter in particular. I'm not just, I'm not filled in enough with the details to speculate, but one thing's for sure, many millions of systems are caught in the crossfire here. I've linked a few articles pertinent to this topic down below if you want to check them out in the video description. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. And stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us. Thanks.